for me, it's been six months of momentum. Um, yeah. It hasn't been like, a, I just knew this person all of a sudden, whatever, whatever. But it's been six months of communicating with them, asking them questions back and forth, back and forth, implementing what they've been telling me. Um, sometimes it's been difficult because what they're telling me, I just don't like, I don't know how to do it. to the Taka Guy family. If you're new to the channel, my name is Taka and through this platform I encourage college students to cultivate a positive growth mindset alongside with guest speakers who come from all walks of life. And today I'm very excited as always to have Tino Modei as a guest speaker all the way from Plymouth today uh, in the UK. So Tino, thank, thanks for your time today and I appreciate it. Um, wel welcome to the channel. Thanks Taka, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's good to also be able to catch up with you after such a long time of us not really speaking too much, yes. it's good to have, it's good to be here. Exactly. So um, to, to give everyone some context as always, do you know, uh, it's been almost uh, over a year and a half, right, that we've talked, so it's it's really been a while, so it's really nice catching up. But do you know, I basically met uh, Airbus um, in summer of 2018. Um, so yeah, the whole year uh, we worked in different departments as interns, but he was basically my neighbor. We were located on the same floor um, and yeah, just one pretty much after every work we'd hang around. I would go to his desk. We would chat about some random stuff. <laughs> um, I'd always check whether he's going home or not because uh, my roots are always on the way back. And a lot of times he would stay longer than I am because he's a hard worker. <laughs> um, but more importantly, outside of work, we 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 caught up um, playing a lot of football. Um, he taught me because he was, you know, pretty much semi-pro. Or <laughs> yeah, in, in my in my younger years. Exactly, exactly. He played for academy and stuff like that, and I, I basically um, didn't have any experience in football. So he taught me a lot, um, and it was good fun. Um, since then, we've I think we've got along pretty well. Um, he's also a good gym buddy an audience perspective we'll probably dig into um, Tino's journey up to this point uh, as well as we'll cover themes around volunteering and mentoring because that's something I think Tino's pretty uh, got some expertise in as well as I I'd say he's relatively passionate in, in that area as well so um, let let's go right in um, Tino walk us a bit through like where, where did you grow up and let's start with that um, so from the beginning for me Originally born in Zimbabwe, um, kind of lived there until I was about five or six because my mum managed to get a job here in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, kind of just the entire family came to the UK, kind of settled down. Um, so pretty from the age of six, I've been I've been here studying, went through primary school, secondary school, um, was a uni. And it's been, yeah, it's been a long process, a lot of learnings along the way. So it's, uh, yeah, I think it's it's definitely been a very rewarding process coming from Kind of where I used to live, which was very rural, rural areas where like electricity and you know yeah. things like that. now people now have washing machines, dishwashers, everything was by hand at that point. Right. Um, and sometimes you like you'd have to rely on on moonlight for like as nat as your natural lighting. Now we have lamps, we've got everything, room lighting, everything's perfect here. Mm -hmm. um, but to kind of come from that and then transition to here where everything's pretty much at the click of click of a phone. Um, it has been an interesting learning curve for me, but it's been rewarding, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you mentioned that, and I think we all should be very uh, appreciative of, of what we have, I think. Sometimes we take things for granted, so um, absolutely. And your, your mom, you know, I, I, I saw your post the other day, but she's doing trials, uh, drug trials, right, for COVID testing? Yeah, so she was quite heavily involved in the early stages. I think when COVID came out on March time, yeah, she kind of got involved in the early early testing where you kind of have patients coming in and they would have to look with the PPE and protection, everything like the the heavy heavy armor stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. working with the with the patients, kind of sitting with them, administering their drugs, and it was quite a scary time I think at the beginning because we were kind of, we like everybody was was new to COVID and and we didn't really know how it was spreading, how it would affect people, whether being just in close proximity was was enough to catch it. Um, so it was quite a bit of a scary time when she'd go to work and then come back home after being around like infected patients and stuff. Yeah. It was it was it was an interesting time, but I think we kind of had to try and remain we understood 
what the kind of the end goal was, like what the work she was doing was try, trying to help people. So I think that kind of gave us the, you know, the, the strength that we needed to get through it. Mm -hmm. And did it sort of um, change the dynamics like of how she interacted with you guys? Um, for, like based on the fact that she's she's been in touch with obviously potential COVID patients, right? How, how did that work in at home? Um, I mean, the house became very, very sterile. Like, every day, like my mom, like we come in, um, we actually, I think we, we we come in. There's hand washing stations at the at the door. But whatever, if you're wearing, let's say for example, my dad when he's coming in from work, if he's wearing uniform, it's kind of like there's like a you need to go straight straight to the room, take off everything, put it in the wash, wash yeah. your hands, take a shower, and just basically cleanse your whole body. Same thing for her. She would make sure she's um, she's fully like she sterilized herself and sanitized before she kind of makes contact with us. Mm. She didn't, even though she was wearing PPE and whatever else in work, she had to be extra vigilant because it's not like her exposure was coming from walking past somebody in the street. It was her suiting up and dressing up and then going into the actual wards where you you know that this patient is positive. Um, so you have to be extra, extra careful and you know if, for example, you've got a break in your PPE and your protection, that could potentially lead to... So it was, it was a learning curve for most of us. I think we were extra, extra careful. Mm. Um, and I think when, in general, I think most people when they're still learning about it and kind of not really understanding what COVID was like because most people don't see the patients or don't see um, loved ones, for example, who are sick with, with the illness. Obviously, touch wood, I wouldn't wish upon anyone else, but I right. think you have that exposure and you see these things mm -hmm. to kind of see the world a little bit more differently and you understand why um like why sanitizing and why the government you know restrictions are in place and that sort of thing um so for my for myself especially it's been it's been different i personally i don't know if you have but i've never really been through a pandemic sort of situation yeah exactly <laughs> uh, so it's, it's been it's one of those where you tell your kids in, in the future about about this time when we were younger you know, we had to deal with this, this, and this, and they're not going to understand. You're going to try and explain to them, and yeah. yeah. But it's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been a challenging. But I think past six months, um, me personally, for for COVID, obviously, it's not the same for everyone, but it's actually been very rewarding mm. because it's kind of restricted where my focus can go in terms of social. <laughs> it's no longer is no longer something that um, I wasn't like an overly social person in the beginning, but now you know that there's no there's no sh like the shops are limited bars clubs whatever else it's all limited you yeah. just focus. and it was kind of same time as i was graduating and kind of allowed me to start thinking about that's how i ended up going into real estate um because i met some people started talking started developing um ideas and networks and um and it's it's yeah me of six months ago is not the same as i am now basically i've, I've had a big shift in the way that i now kind of what kind of want to approach it yeah 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 that's i don't think that would have been possible with obviously it's, we don't want a pandemic but without covid or a situation like this i don't think that shift in mindset would have happened and if it had it would have taken a very very long time i believe wow that, that's crazy you mentioned that so over the six months i mean we have to i guess thank covid in a way obviously covid's not ideal uh in this situation but you actually took this opportunity to pretty much transform yourself with that mindset. And um, yeah, now you're in real estate, but let's let's stop right there. B before you got into real estate now, what yeah. what did you exactly study at university? So I was computer science. Uh, <laughs> so I was, you know, into the tech, into the coding. Yeah. I still am to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much my, it's, it's my passion, but that was, it was my, it was kind of my life, you know, the typical coder spent hours Drinking energy drinks all night is coding, coding, coding. Yeah. So yeah, it was. I think it was a really rewarding experience. I think it's. If I think if people have the opportunity to learn how to code, especially for the future, and especially with what kind of COVID has shown for the job market and redundancies, um, I think it's technology and understanding how it works and how it can be your friend. I think I would definitely encourage people, even if it's not to kind of maybe my my level of attaining a degree and, and whatever else, but just, you know, just understanding um, a few few things here and there. I know for you, for example, you were learning Python coding, um, trying to become like a, a coding master. Um, 
I just mean, miserably like, failed. <laughs> no, man, it's, 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 but it's, it's the effort. It's the, most people, in my mind, wouldn't kind of make, like, take the time to at least try and learn. But I think it's, it's definitely something that computer science, I've, I've definitely enjoyed it. Um, met a lot of great people, a lot of smart yeah. people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's been, it's been, it's been, a, I've enjoyed it. Graduated now. So on to the next phase. Yeah. Well, congratulations for graduating. Thank so, you. <laughs> um, I think, by the way, uh, for any of you guys uh, listening, if you do end up working at a, a company for a big company, for example, as an intern, as an intern, what's great about working at large corporates is you, as long as you um, raise your voice and let's say like I did during my internship, I wanted to learn a bit more about my uh, gain some Python skills for my data analytics projects. And so what I did was I literally went up to my manager and told them, yo, OK, I didn't say yo, but um, I'd love to you know, hone in on my Python skills. Can I take a Coursera course, which is um, X dollars of money? Um, and so then I ended up getting it sponsored by the company uh, without having to pay a dime. So. Um, as long as you're proactive and you're willing to learn, I think um, thing, great things will happen uh, as an intern at a big corporations. No, definitely, um, I definitely agree. I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, I think it can be very easy to kind of get lost in, it's a big corporation, you almost feel like you speaking up, it's because there's so so many things going on, so, like so much going on, other people with their own tasks, own priorities. I think it's quite easy to forget that people in those corporate they are there to like people are approachable you yeah. can if you if you feel like you you've got a gap in your skills like you were saying with python um or whatever else even if it's something like i don't i know some i've spoken to some people who do toastmasters for example they want to work on their on their public speaking skills presentations just any gap that you kind of identify within yourself the opportunities they are there um and you you will thank yourself for it because at the end of the internship or the experience however long it is you come out the other side a much a much more like well developed uh, individual, which I think is very key. Exactly, exactly. I totally agree. And um, so you you were you know a hardcore let's say coder in university. You you did an internship in the field of IT and tech um, in the aerospace industry, of course. But now you moved on to real estate. <laughs> Walk us through that transition. That transition, um, I think so. In my background, so my family in back in Zimbabwe, we've kind of started transitioning into um, owning kind of properties and real estate, that side of things. But because of the the way the economy is in general with, for example, um, if you want to over there, um, because of the way the government kind of controls, controls the way that like the in and outs of, of money and in goods and services, you know, it's, it's a lot stricter than it is here. Um, it is. It can be tricky. For example, if you've got money there, trying to get it over to the bank, like from the banks, and getting it into the UK, it can be a very long-winded process. Mm -hmm. um, so, kind of, my family has a bit of a background in in real estate and property, um, and within myself, I kind of wanted to find a way to bring that over here um, and see how I could start to build something of my own in the UK. Um, and in general, I think. This is, it's not like to discourage people from doing internships, but internships kind of made me realize that um, I do enjoy kind of like the projects that I worked on. I do enjoy like working as an individual and building things and, and seeing things grow and then giving them to other people to add value and they can then use it and they can, they can uh, make their lives and their jobs a lot easier. Um, so it's kind of been like a, a process of family background with, along with just my my natural tendency to want to build things and add value and and other people can use in some way um and at all the same time i think it's timing i think i can't um emphasize enough the the the, the importance of timing mm -hmm. i've met I, I would say personally i think i've been quite fortunate to meet certain individuals at very interesting times okay uh, so for example i i met uh, my mentor now he was kind of almost at the start of his career. Um, and I, I kind of met him and it's, it's called a uh, property uh, investor net, like network. So networking meetings, I kind of met him there. Um, I didn't really, really know who he was beginning of his career. We got talking, couple conversations. Um, and then I found out, I kind of searched his name and I found out that he's, um, he was recently featured in Forbes as a real estate investor of the year, like young real estate investor of the year. 
And I was thinking to myself, I didn't even know who this guy was. And it was just a, a conversation. Um, and that kind of propelled my 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 kind of passion for wanting to accelerate this whole the, the real estate business and building it up because I saw what he was doing and especially because he had come from um a background where he like his fact like his family was really really poor he was living in I think he was living in London couldn't speak a word of English had to learn basically from the ground up um and build his and build his entire property portfolio mm-hmm. um, in the space of I think it was like five to ten years he went from not speaking English to now um, being featured in Forbes, um, and I was thinking to myself, what are the odds of meeting somebody like that who is kind of in a similar situation to myself, where I came from a background where my family is not, you know, we're not overly wealthy. They've come from a maybe um, less privileged background where some people might have, you know, financial backing from their parents, or we've come from things a little bit more difficult. And he's kind of basically he's, he's been on the grind um, for five to ten years, and. Just most people you meet, they're established or they're already there. But kind of to see him at that stage and to kind of see his his his, but like a, the 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 rise that he's had has been amazing. And just to be there and to see witness it and to ask him questions and to have met like mentors as well as mentoring, I think it's been key for myself in six in the past six months. I'd say. Mm-hmm. And when when you say mentoring, right? I think a lot of people, let's say, well, first of all, I think. It's, it's pretty hard to find like that mentor um, that sort of you can click with as well as someone who's already achieved so much in life, which you you seem to found. But once like stumbling upon those people, how did you go about building up that relationship from scratch um, and building up that trust? So I think building the relationship for me was about I kind of I went into it with a with an algebra, I, one thing that I learned from, I've started reading a lot of books recently and it's really evolved my mindset. So one of the things that I learned from, uh, it's a book called Principles by Ray Dalio. Ah, okay, yeah. And one of the things that he um, that he kind of preaches is having like a radical open-mindedness. Um, mm. and, and in that, it's kind of understanding that there are things to learn. You don't know everything, kind of, everybody has something to teach you. And if you take that advice on board and try and implement it in your own life, um, you all kind of see the results. So I think when you meet someone who, who's been successful, if you if you're lucky enough to to meet them in person, or you know somebody who's doing the sort of things that you want to do, if they give you advice, um, and you you show that proactivity, you want to ask questions, um, and then you kind of implement what they're telling you to do, and you see results, you feedback, and you communicate with them. I think that's the key thing because a lot of them, um, especially when they're successful, time is money for them. So I think the more successful you become, this is when you start looking maybe to outsource or find other people. Like you don't have time maybe to, you know how to build a website. I know how to build a website, for example. But let's say the the more successful and the more goals that I reach, the less time I'll have to sit down and and build a website for myself. So I'll outsource to a freelancer or a friend that I know can build websites. So if you show that intent and that proactivity to want to learn, to want to implement what they're telling you, to ask questions, they will see that you're somebody who's not a time waster because mm. especially in property for example there are people who will pay twenty thousand pounds for for a training course and after that they will do nothing with it <laughs> like, and and that's that's the sort of people that they they don't really tend to have time for because they're people who just throw money but i think for me if what's been key is being proactive and wanting to show intent and showing that i really do want to learn these things then they'll say, okay, this person has the drive and the willingness. I will advocate maybe if, even if they give you 30 minutes of their time, um, it can be a very valuable 30 minutes. Um, and they sh- and that's how you kind of build the trust because they trust you to, to be someone that they can spend time with who's then going to implement what they're telling them. And over time, I think it is kind of like a snowball effect. Um, another book I'd recommend is The Compound Effect. Uh-huh. It, it, it's hard to get started, but I think once you, the momentum, it's, for me, it's been six months of momentum. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been like a, I just knew this person all of a sudden, whatever, whatever. But it's been six months of communicating with them, asking them questions back and forth, back and forth, implementing what they've been telling me. Um, sometimes it's been difficult because what they're telling me, I just don't like, I don't know how to do it. I think you then have to go and find the answers and you come back to them showing that you've tried to find the answers, but they're not going to tell you the answers. Um, and I guess for you, the same thing, like you, you would want to speak to people who are being proactive and being successful. You ask them questions, how they're doing it. 
And then rather than speaking to people who are less less proactive, because not not in a bad way, but those people you there's not as much to learn from them purely because they're not willing to put in the work. So you want to associate with people who are willing to put in the work as well as you yourself putting in the work. And that's how you build those relationships. That's the advice that I can give. Like just put honestly, just it's a typical put in the grind. Like I'm being honest. That's all it that's literally what it is. Put in the grind and understanding what you want to achieve and doorways will open. Yeah, yeah. I think having that what you want to achieve in mind and clarifying that first, being aware of that, I think is very important. But more importantly, that that next step of uh, reaching out, executing um, from lessons that you've learned or theories that you've learned is actually going to sort of, let's say, differentiate you from the pack uh, when it comes to propelling yourself forward. And it's funny you mentioned compounding effect uh, because Daniela, who was the the girl working at Microsoft, uh, the PM that I interviewed last week, was also mentioning this idea of small wins that compound over time. And that's how she propelled her career and ultimately landed her job today at Microsoft. So um, I I hope that the audience is starting to see a theme. Um, Everyone's in different fields doing, you know, great, inspiring things. But there are certain traits that allow certain um, individuals to sort of propel and accelerate their personal and professional development and that that's not to say it's only these people that can do it it's actually the opposite so it literally means that literally anyone can do it if you you know actually um, go and execute and so I think that's a big powerful message from in fact today's um, chat that we're having Um, so yeah thanks for that you know and sort of shifting gears when you mention mentoring so you've met your mentor um, and sort of he's giving you guidance, but you've also actually been involved in mentoring younger people uh, and so on. So talk us through um, some of your mentoring experience. So well, in the past, well, Airbus, when we were working, uh, kind of working together, they had the number partners scheme. Yeah. So you'd, um, or if, if the audience is, is not familiar, you could you'd spend an afternoon speaking to, you kind of a small group of children, working on mad skills, helping them, like playing games, basically making maths as fun as possible for them, uh, whilst also giving them that kind of that that break from the classroom. Um, so I think that was a really important experience for me and myself because in terms of, because I was I, for up until that point, I was used to communicating um, and speaking to people who are maybe of a similar age, similar level, or they understand, they understand certain concepts, certain ideas. Yeah. Uh, and in my own development, I think it's been key to understand that you, not everybody under, is going gonna, is gonna to interpret what you say um, in the way that you intend to say it. Um, obviously, children, um, they're, they're a lot different from adults. Uh, <laughs> you really do have to kind of understand your audience quite a bit. Um, and in terms of for my, for my mentoring experience, I think it, it, was, it was really, really important to kind of see. It's, it's quite, with children, it's quite amazing because you see visual, like you see the development that's happening in their minds and in their in their brains like it's almost like a, a light bulb when they understand the concept um that you've explained to them quite well mm-hmm. uh, or they've kind of asked they've, they've developed that curiosity to want to ask questions and and test test this stress test almost your like the idea so they'll say so if i do this will i get this and, and you'll be like yeah whatever and that's that shows that understanding um and i think maybe with adults adults are less willing to be as as you know as inquisitive and curious as children are so I think it was quite refreshing working with, with children. Who, they question everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything that you that you tell them, they question why, 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 why. Um, whereas adults, maybe they take sometimes take things take things at face value. Uh, but I think it, it kind of questioned myself. I was thinking, oh wait, damn. What? Wait, what, why is that? Like I just even for myself with certain maths concept, like I would just take it. That, for example, you, you as an adult, if I tell you that one plus one is two, you'd be like, okay, that is, that's the answer. And you'd be like, why? And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, how, how, do I, how do I explain this in a way that they will understand? Yeah. Just telling them this is how it is. Um, so I think it has been, it's definitely something that I would recommend if people do have the opportunity to maybe work with the younger generation and help them develop. It's something that I would, it's a very fulfilling, fulfilling experience. I, I totally agree because so Tino was doing the number partners. I was doing the reading buddies program. And yeah, while Tino was working with the numbers with the younger kids, I was 
reading with um, basically similar age children and it was really fascinating to see like Tino said how these kids are always asking questions and I think one of the key takeaways for us individual young professionals is to never lose that um, aspect where we're constantly trying to learn and we're always inquiring asking like why 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 I think as we grow up what I hear from um, more seasoned professionals people I've talked to is in general I would say they take things for granted like you mentioned but as well as they kind of stop um, asking those questions like the simple questions like why and I think um, yeah I definitely learned a lot from <laughs> the kids and I, I think another takeaway is that if we do if you do have the opportunity like Tino said make sure you surround yourself uh, with people not just your age your peers people who are a little bit more seasoned than you, so mentor-like individuals, but also people who are younger than you, who you can mentor. So getting mentored, um, interacting with your peers and be uh, mentoring other younger people, the younger generation, allows you to get that whole, let's say, holistic interaction with different age groups. And I think that gives you um, better opportunities for growth, I would say, on a personal level. No, I, I, I definitely, definitely agree. I think life's all about exposing yourself to as many different almost uncomfortable situations I'll yeah. say because I wouldn't say I was, I was comfortable teaching the children purely because it's an experience I'd never had mm. but it's something that I think that's just like in life if you want to grow and you want to develop you do have to get really uncomfortable with 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 the situations that you put yourself in um, and I think you've definitely you've summarized it very very well I think surrounding yourself with people who are they say you, it doesn't have to be someone, for example, who's who's featured in Forbes, but just someone who's a little bit further down the track from you. Um, and this could be people of further down the track. They could be of different genders, whatever else. Because, for example, you could have someone who's featured in Forbes and the struggle for, for example, a woman to be successful might not be the same for a man. So I think it's definitely just to have as, as many people around you you can learn from as possible, mm. um, which is what I've been quite lucky to to have in the past six months. Um, I think it's it's definitely been some one of the key things that I would recommend for people, just mentors and if you can mentor uh, other young people and pass on the wisdom and the knowledge and experience that you've you've gained uh, from your from your experiences yourself. Yeah, beautifully said. And I think it also goes to show that, that your mentor is true character, right? The fact that you didn't have to figure out later on that he was featured on Forbes sort of shows his humility um when it comes to like meeting new people he doesn't really come across as the uh, let, let's say superstar type but that's just because he's super humble i'm guessing yeah so yeah okay cool um i think in terms of the 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 main advices i would say are there any other um tips you would give to the college students who are going through obviously tough times right now um i would i would say if you're going through tough times i think one thing that has actually been quite useful, again, I've referred to books. Um, it's it's uh, one of the books that I've, that I've finished reading was Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, yeah. and one of the key things that it kind of emphasized was um, taking time to understand, to have a life that is kind of based on your principles and your values, and then also focusing on, on all aspects of your life so you make time for things that do matter. Because I know, for example, um, the Tino of, of, of last year is not the same as this year, purely because when I was in university, for example, um, I would be so heavily focused on, on university work and maybe I'd neglect friends and not really speak to them or health-wise, I wouldn't really uh, be focusing on it too much. Um, but through reading this book, it kind of identifies, you know, spiritual, mental, physical, these areas in your life that we often forget. I would say if you're going through a hard time, I think it's it's important to try and center yourself in terms of living a well-balanced life as, where possible. Obviously, people are going through uh, different things, different struggles, but I think we, we can have a tendency to over-prioritize one area of our life and then start to uh, focus on other areas, um, whereas your mental and physical health might start to suffer because you're trying to keep up with the demands of work and whatever else, but then you'll find that maybe you're, you're wanting to maybe keep up with demands and neglecting the other areas is what's actually causing the issue, not the work itself, but your lack of balance in, in your life. So maybe mm. being a little bit more active, something, for example, like 
I make sure to try and get 10,000 steps a day. So being active, getting some fresh air, um, trying to be healthy in your, in your diet choices, for example, where possible, uh, spiritually, maybe if you try to focus, like set time aside, for example, in the morning when I wake up, I've tried to instill uh, morning routines um, where, for example, you don't, I don't wake, like I wake up, I, I try not, I don't touch my phone. I try my best not to let, you know, the demands of the world kind of dictate my morning. So you have time to yourself. You can focus, you can unwind. Same thing, end of the day, where possible. Um, obviously, if you've got if you've got assignments due and whatever else, um, that, that's that's something that that's might be unavoidable. But I think in the evening, setting aside like setting aside time to unwind and just take care of yourself mentally, um, I think it is really really key. And if possible for me, I keep a journal, so to kind of reflect on the day and and to understand where I'm going wrong. Am I moving forward? Am I where I want to be? Uh, what what are my biggest wins for the day? What could be improved? Um, and because I'm quite a religious guy, I also always think about three things that I'm grateful for in my life. So you don't think about, for example, oh, I've got all these assignments, I've got this work, you've got it. It kind of you, if you're forced to think about three things that you're grateful for in your life, you you can start to think like my life is not all that bad. Like in in the great like big picture thinking, not thinking you know about the, in the moment. You start thinking a little bit bigger picture, like. I have this, I have this, I have these opportunities, and it does really just change your mood quite a bit. Um, it helps me anyways, and I hope it can help other people as well. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, the idea of thinking about three things you're grateful for, um, especially during tough times, I would say um, I would highly encourage the audience to try that out. I think it, it helps you get out, like you said, out of the, the nitty gritty daily struggles that you're going through and sort of appreciate what you have on a very general higher level basis. So so thanks. Thanks for all your tips, Tino. Um, really do appreciate it. For those of you um, who took any use or found one or two things useful, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Hit that notification post so that you don't miss out on any future uh, upcoming videos. And yeah, um, until the next one. Oh, before that, Tino, um, let me know who you would recommend me to talk to next. Um, don't say Josh, because Josh is already on my list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, without further ado, stay healthy, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao. Bye, guys.